Hello, this is Bible Academy for Children. I'm pastor and teacher, Curtis Omo, and today we will finish the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, beginning in verse 16. Now, before we begin, let's make sure that we have confessed our known sins, according to 1 John 1, 9. At the same time, we're going to allow the Spirit to control us. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this privilege and opportunity we have to study your word. We ask that our hearts and minds be open and ready to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. We have been talking about the excellent wife, the valiant wife, the good wife, all those terms meaning that this is a very good woman, a uh, what we would call a good Christian woman, a good wife, a good mother, and so on. And we saw that this poem in Proverbs 31 is what we call an acrostic. Remember, an acrostic means that the first letter of the verse begins with a Hebrew letter in order of the Hebrew alphabet. So we are in the sixth one, which means we're looking for the sixth letter, and that word is zamim, and that is the sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, let me show you what it looks like, just to show you. Now, it looks like a Z to us, but it was actually the sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and that's the word for considers. And you got to remember also in the Hebrew, they're not in the word order like we put it. So we put it in English. So the first word is considers. Okay? So that tells us that this is an important point for people to remember. They use these things for memory uh, purposes. Now, 16 through 18 speak of her financial abilities, what we would call enterprises, big long word, it means she is very good at making money. She will make money, invest it, buy something, invest it to make more money. Verse 16, she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Now, this is a little bit complicated, so pay attention. Uh, let's first of all say she considers. She's thinking about it. She ha has a purpose in mind. She wants to do something with a field. She plans on planting a vineyard. Vineyard. We get that in the second line. So, what is she going to buy it with? Well, notice the next second line. With the fruit of her hands, she has made something and sold it and made money so she can go out and buy this field. And she plants a vineyard in the field. Now, what will she do then? Well, she'll let it grow uh, grapes. That's what vineyards are for. And then she can sell the grapes or make wine, depending on which direction she wants to go. And she can start a little business and pay some servants, hire some uh, laborers, uh, have a wine press made. I have one pulled in, made, and brought in, store the wine, and so on. So she's into business. She spends her money wisely. She works, and she makes a product and invests carefully. She gives a lot of thought. You don't want to waste money that you've worked so hard for. You make sure it's a good investment, and she does that. Look at verse 17. She girds her loins with strength and makes her arm strong. To gird the loins is a phrase that the ancients used, uh, something you did with your clothes. Now, remember, they, they wore kind of long, uh, well, we would call them dresses today, but the men weren't wearing dresses. They were long garments, and they went down basically to the ground, and they wore these long garments, and if they were going to run, they'd have to pick them up, tuck them inside their belt so their legs wouldn't catch on them, you see. So this is a term that means to get ready or prepare. So she girds her loins with strength. She's ready to go out to work and makes her arm strong. This tells us she's willing to get to work. Now in her case, she made thread or cloth to make some money, we saw that earlier, and now she moves over to making money from a vineyard. Look at verse 18. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable 
profitable means she's going to make some extra money. Her lamp does not go out at night. This tells us that her business is going to make some money. She's not going to lose money. She's not going to work hard and lose it all on a bad investment or bad purchase. Now, that happens sometimes, but this woman, remember, she's been considering what she's doing. And now says she perceives she gets a good idea of what she sees. She sees that her merchandise is profitable. That means she's made some money. She, sold, she has sold some grapes or, or uh, sold some wine, uh, whatever it is. She's made some money. Notice, her lamp does not go out at night. That means she sticks to it. She sticks to it until the job is done. She may work into the night. If you ever had one of your parents come in late from work, sometimes their boss wants them to stay, or sometimes they stay to get a job done. This is what she does. Uh, it shows that she is continuously working to get a job done. Doesn't mean she doesn't have time for play and fun and raising the kids and going on vacation and stuff like that, but she is not one of those types of people that would just walk off a job. She will get the job done. She's always got something going. And what does this mean for her and her family? Well, we look at that in verses 19 through 21. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. Now we're going to talk about her making some material. She may sell this too. All right, that's probably what I was referring to in a moment ago. She can sell different things that she makes. So that's what's happening here. Now, these particular tools, the distaff and spindle, were, uh, well, not so long ago, uh, people still, I guess in, in uh, more primitive areas of the world, use these type of things to gather thread. And they'll, they'll get some wool and they'll put it in a bundle and get a string going and wind it and wind it until they make a thread. And then from that thread, they'll, they'll uh, do what they need to do to make a cloth. And out of that cloth, they'll make some clothing. Okay. She uses a spindle. You've probably seen pictures of these, uh, that big old wheel and you have the woman sitting by it, right? In her hand, uh, she'll have what they call a distaff. And that's for holding a bunch of flax or tow or what they call wool from which the thread is drawn and spinning by hand. Now, you can look this up on the Internet and see someone actually doing it or see the design of this machine. But this describes her hands involved in the making of material. She's making material. Today, we can just go to the store and buy material, or we can just go buy the clothes. Some people make their own clothes. When I was younger, more people did that, I think, than they do today. But now clothes are so cheap and doesn't take uh, a lot of money to buy them, so it's just quicker to just go buy them. But some people like to make their own clothes. Next verse. Look what she does within the community. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. This tells us that she's involved in the community. Uh, she has a positive effect on those around her. So she just doesn't sit at home every day and doesn't go out. She goes out. She uh, probably does her business out in the community. She sees the poor out there. She reaches out to them, or maybe an organization that helps the poor, people who can't help themselves. Maybe someone's injured or sick and can't work, and uh, she goes to help them. Maybe it's a relative. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a neighbor, you see? But she's willing to reach out to the community. Now, here's, here's the uh, verse again. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Verse 21, she goes back to the clothing. We go back to the clothing, seeing what she does. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Now, this tells us that cold weather doesn't bother her because she has already made clothing for the family. You see, she's not afraid of the snow, cold weather, or the winter for her household. 
for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Now, scarlet in particular is mentioned because that's nice clothes. In those days, that was a nice clo nice clothing. It's, in fact, it's a symbol for costly wool. And of course, wool is good for the winter time. So a wise mother prepares for difficult times, including natural disasters, like, well, I don't know if you call them uh, the disaster itself, but recently we had some hurricane force winds because we had a hurricane and we lost our electricity for a while. Some lost it for over a week. We didn't lose it, but about, about a day or two. That was some of the best we've ever had when it comes to losing electricity. But when you lose electricity, you know, you can't do anything. And when you live in Texas in the, in the heat of the summer, it gets really miserable. You can't hardly breathe. It's so hot. Uh, even if you have windows open, there's no breeze sometimes after a hurricane. It's dead out there. And that's suffering. So she's ready for difficult times. Now, in my case, I try to get the family ready to have some sort of a power source, uh, like a generator or maybe a battery to plug in to uh, some fans, but that still is not like having an air conditioner, but you do what you can. But this just tells us that she prepares for the family. If it's hot weather, she's ready. If it's cold weather, she's ready. If a storm's coming, she has a plan. It's always important to be ready for natural disasters, especially if you live in one of those areas. Now, we live near the, uh, uh, the Gulf of Mexico and also live near a bay, uh, which is a big bay uh, near Houston, Texas. And uh, we could get hit with water from either place. Plus, there's always a bunch of rain. So you got to watch out for the surf and how high the surf can come up. And uh, if it comes up real high, it can flood from the ocean or from a bay. And plus, you got the rain on top of that. So you got it coming from maybe two or three different directions. Sometimes you have to just get high. There's no place to get high around here except in a house. <laughs> but if it's a bad wave, it could take away the house. So these are all kind of things you have to plan for. Now, we've seen her both work in business, provide for her family, prepare, prepare for disaster, make some money, invest it, uh, take care of the community, get involved in the community. So she's a busy woman. And here's one word I like to say. She's productive. She's productive. And it's not all about herself. It's about her family and the community. Verse 22 talks about her business some more. Listen to this. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Now, earlier we saw her using the spindle and distaff. Now she takes the material and she also makes bed coverings. We might call them blankets or covers, okay? Um, both her bed covers and clothing are made of the finest textiles from plants and animals. That's what she's been doing. These would be expensive. Uh, the word fine linen would normally be imported from Egypt. But she may buy some fine linen, but then make her own uh, uh, clothing with it, you see. The purple, it says here at the last word, the purple describes a wool that's been dyed. This also indicates something imported. So she probably went to some of the expensive clothing shops. Remember, she's making some money now. She can afford this. Because the red dye that they made the, the purple with, you know, they'd mix it with other colors, I suppose, but it came from a seashell off the Phoenician coast. That always indicates wealth and luxury. You get that from other scriptures like Judges 8.26, Song of Solomon 3.10. So now she has planned, she's worked, and even traveled to get some of the finest products for her family. And with this kind of support from home, guess what? The husband, the man of the house, is free to conduct business for the city. You see, he's not concerned 
about the family being taken care of because she's got a good wife at home taking care of them, even working, even being productive. She doesn't sit around and just watch soap operas and, and eat candy. <laughs> uh, that's not a good thing to say, but that's not a good thing for people to do. If it's a day off, maybe, or they're taking a break. But people need to be productive. Look at verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. What does this mean? Well, if you've been in some of our lessons, you know the gates were where the city leaders gathered and the judges. Today, we might call it uh, the town square or uh, city hall. All right. So it looks like He's one of the leaders in the community. He sits, it says, among the elders of the land. The elders would be the leaders. These are usually older, wiser men who make decisions for the community. You know, how can we get some more water in here? Today we'd say, how can we get uh, better power or, or our streets in, in better shape? Keep the uh, lights going, the street lights, the electricity going, whatever it takes, you see. So because of her, produ her productivity, she's able to free the husband to help lead the city. So he's involved in conducting business. He may be a, a judge himself. Uh, he may be one of the uh, city leaders, okay, and help make decisions. Maybe uh, even into the larger community. Today we might say he's in the, he's in the county leadership He's, a, he's on the town council. He's on the city council. Uh, maybe he's on the county board of some sort, the water board, or maybe uh, people get involved in uh, school boards, that type of thing. The point is, her husband is a respectable leader in the community. She has helped provide him a stable and financial secure home so he can go out and help the community in his way. And guess what? He has nice clothes to wear, which helps uh, build up his prestige in the community. He doesn't walk in looking like a slob. Okay? He sits among the city elders or leaders of the land. It says elders of the land. This could be the larger area. Maybe he's a state leader. We have states in the United States, right? Maybe he works with the governor. That type of thing. Land shows that He's uh, influenced a much larger area than just the local community. So his prestige and his importance in the community is supported by his excellent wife's industry, her financial ability, her managing skills, and wisdom. It frees his time to learn and develop ideas that help others on a larger scale. He is a leader of the people. He just doesn't stay out of it. He's into politics. He's into government. He is into helping others because that's one of the commandments. Love one another. Love your neighbor. And he shows that by getting involved with others, helping others, passing policies that's best for the family, for the community for the children, maybe even for visitors. Make sure we got good places for visitors to come as they look at our community and maybe want to move here. You see? In verse 24, it talks more about her business activity. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Now we get some specifics on exactly what does she make. She makes linen garments all right now listen about listen to this she not only makes them but she sells them so she's a manufacturer and she sells them now doesn't mean she stands out on the street and sells them she may sell them to a merchant which would make her like the wholesaler okay then the merchant would sell it for him or the merchant would buy them from her, and the merchant make money off of them himself. So she's a wholesaler to the merchant, who in turn sells her products. 
She makes a good product, which is sold in stores. You ever had anybody in your local community who uh, makes stuff and sells it in one of the stores? Sometimes you'll find it in the grocery stores and near the grocery stores. Or you might have a farmer's market where people come in and sell their products right on the street or maybe have someone else sell it for them. So this is business. This is business. This is good. It helps people uh, get what they need and uh, others it provides prosperity. The other thing she does, she delivers sashes to the merchant. Hmm. Now a sash, we call it today, it's type of a belt or even a girdle. It's a big wrap around that comes around the waist. It may hook, it may tie, uh, it may fold under, but it's used for finer clothing. Sometimes the word here also means uh, some sort of under, undergarment. So now it tells us she's not only a manufacturer, she's a wholesaler and supplier. And one of the things she does, look at the second word in the second line, she delivers. She does her own delivery. She delivers her sashes to the merchant. So she's busy. Well, today I'm going to make the delivery. She's already made it. She's gathered it up. She's loaded up. She goes and makes the delivery, perhaps to the uh, uh, merchant, who in turn sells it for her. So you can see she thinks ahead. She, she probably knows her business really well because she don't want to lose money. And she makes a good product. Nothing wrong with that. You can do that when you're young. You can do it when you're old. Get your own business started. Work out of the home. There's lots of ways to do that today on a on a computer, if you have those skills, but you should. Something pretty basic to everybody today. In verses 25 through 27, we see her again uh, using her wisdom, putting it into action. It says, strength and majesty are her clothing, and she laughs at the days to come. Let's talk about this. Strength. She has power. She has might. She's not a weak woman. She has energy, and she's effective in what she does. Majesty means that she has a dignity about her. Now, that means she looks good. She acts right. She has good manners. She has a good reputation. Um, in some sense, she's above many of her peers. People look up to her. She stands out, and it's even in her clothing. She dresses better than a lot of people. Why can she do that? Because she's worked hard. She's spent her money wisely. She's invested it wisely. She doesn't waste time. She doesn't waste her money. And she's productive and she's good at it. And notice the last line. And she laughs at the days to come. This is a woman who is so well prepared, not only for herself, but for her husband and for her family. That when trouble, kind, when trouble times come, when things are going to get rough, she's ready. No doubt she'd have some stuff stored up, some money set aside, perhaps some food set aside, some extra clothing set aside for when t things get tough. This is, this is wisdom. This is wisdom in action. Also in the Old Testament, often how one dress indicated one's character. Uh, people who are, I don't mean this in a sinful way, but are proud of their work, of their accomplishments, they often show it in the way they act and walk and dress. When I go to the VA sometimes, VA is where the uh, veterans go, uh, uh, military veterans go, some of them will wear different hats and it shows what ship they served on or what service they were in or what war they were in. Sometimes uh, some wear the ribbons that are the, of the medals they won in war. That's their dignity and they, and they show that among other veterans and veterans recognize those signals and say, uh, those signs and they say, oh, well, he was in World War II, he won the Silver Star, and he was in the army, something like that. You can tell all this just by those things on their, on their hats sometimes. Some of them wear shirts too. 
Well, this tells us that she dresses her family in nice clothes. She carries herself with distinction. She has strength and character to overcome difficulties. Difficult people, difficult situations. She anticipates trouble and prepares for it. She also carries herself like she's ready to take on anything. You know what I mean? Any trouble, any person. And people know that this is a woman who is well prepared. She's not afraid to get in there and do what needs to be done and looks good doing it. She upholds her dignity both inside and outside the home. She even laughs, which means she has an upbeat attitude. She's confident in facing difficult times and people, whatever the days bring. Verse 26 tells us how she speaks. Listen to this. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. This is one of my favorite ones. There's a lot this woman is to be admired about. But listen to this. When she speaks, she speaks with wisdom. She is someone worth listening to. Have you ever been around anybody like that? You want to hear what they have to say. They're an expert about it, or they went through it. Or they look like they know what they're talking about. And you listen. And people who are smart will listen. So since she speaks with wisdom, this assumes she's already acquired wisdom. And wisdom has shaped her thinking and her speech. She's a wise woman. And there's a way she speaks. That's in the next line. And the teaching of kindness is in her tongue. The word kindness, one of our favorite words, kessed, that's the word for loving kindness, for goodness. She is kind in her words, in her speech. You can see her care for others. She has a pleasant way about her. She is so good at being kind in her speech, she teaches others as she does it. You just hear somebody over there say, boy, I wish I could talk that that way. Well, if you had wisdom and you learned to love people, maybe you could. But you can hear the love in her voice, her tone, her words. You can just hear it, that when she speaks, there's a loving kindness in her voice. Wisdom does this. It adds a, well, we use the word sublimity to one's voice. You want to hear it. It's nice to listen to. She knows what to say and how to say it with the right tone. Not too rough, not too soft, but just right for the people and the situation she's addressing or She's talking to. Now, let me just pause for a moment. We're talking about an adult woman. For you young girls who are listening to this, your goal in life is to be a mature Christian woman. A mature Christian lady might be a better way to put it. This is what we have here. She's also a good wife and a good mother. But even if she is by herself, she would be good because she's productive with all the things we've seen. You see? Now, if you're an older woman and you hear this, you've got some things to learn and do, don't you? Well, it's the same way with the men when they learn wisdom. Uh, We wouldn't be learning it if we didn't need it. We all need it. But we can just improve and get more godly this way. Men should be looking, uh, single men should be looking for young women like this. Or even if you're an older man and you're still single or a widow or a widower, you may be looking for a woman like this. Uh, Young girls, you want a mother like this. You want to be a mother like this. You see, so there's lots of room for application here. Thinking this through, 
because there's application for all of us. Whether you're looking for a wife, or you are a wife, or a young girl and you're going to be a wife, right? Mothers and fathers should be teaching their children this too. Whether it's a boy or a girl, here's what you want in a good woman. Whether it be you or one that you want to marry someday. Well, we'll continue here next time in talking about the excellent wife or valiant woman. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We ask that our hearts will be open to hear it, to learn it, to believe it, and in the power of your spirit that we'll make the proper applications. Help us have discernment for life from your truth. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen.